Yeah, namaste. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening to friends all over the world. Uh, I welcome you all to this panel discussion on India and the pandemic, countering the crisis. The panel addresses how COVID-19 has affected India and the subsequent response by the people, institutions, and government of India in countering the crisis that emerged out of the pandemic. The task of this panel is to address the specific questions from the perspective of health, economy, education, philanthropy, and the governance, and also from looking at it from uh, international relations. I am uh, Balaganapati Devarkonda, Professor of Philosophy from University of Delhi, India. And our distinguished panelists include Vijay Shankar Pandey, former Secretary, Government of India, Praveen Khatau, Chairman, Londinium Asset Management, Monaco, Pankaj Mittal, Secretary General, Association of Indian Universities, New Delhi, Srikant Moningi, CEO of Sadirika Swastata Ogahana Foundation from India, and who is also presently uh, a, a practicing doctor there. Uh, this pandemic, COVID-19 pandemic, has affected, you know, we all will definitely, it has affected every individual on earth. <clears throat> every institution on, on earth, social, whether you consider it to be individual, social or ethical, whatever. And we have moved, we, over a period of time, we thought we moved from normal to pandemic to the new normal. So this is how we looked at the life. So it has affected life systems of uh, uh, the country, uh, life systems of the world as well. And the biological systems got affected, uh, political systems have got affected, even the term globalization that we were talking and we were referring to some time back has also got affected and new forms of globalization, new way of understanding globalization has become normal now or new normal now. So this unprecedented situation uh, cannot be prepared by anybody because it's nobody knows what would be the consequences of our actions that we take up and what would be the effect of the pandemic on the individuals and the systems that we have. So uh, that is all. No, nobody can be considered to be wrong or right in reacting to the situation because we never know what to, how to react and uh, how to counter the crisis. Uh, philosophically looking, since I'm a uh, philosopher, uh, I'm just trying to respond uh, from the philosophical perspective that we humans are made to understand our epistemological limitations, the base of understanding that we use. We understood the limitations of uh, uh, our epistemology, and metaphysically, we are also made to realize our limitations of knowledge of reality and its relation with us. Mm -hmm. It's not just that. Our actions and reactions to the world, which come in the form of ethical, which come under the perspective of ethical, we are all made to understand the importance of action and inaction as well, as uh, the inactivity is very important, which is given a significant place in various cultures and religions. So uh, the specific questions that uh, this panel would be addressing is, uh, what is the impact of pandemic on health, education and economy of India? How did they counter the resultant crisis by overcoming their limitations? How did philanthropy help the country in countering the emergent problems? Along with these concerns, the role played by India in re-articulating the international relations by rendering a helping hand to the many countries encountering the pandemic also forms a significant part of the discussion. Let me begin with Dr. Srikant because when we are talking about the pandemic, uh, obviously we have to begin with health. Health, as the World Health Organization puts it, is not just biological health or uh, not having a disease. Health has a wider uh, connotation as well. But this pandemic has affected biological and through that biological, it also has affected social and other forms of psychological forms of health as well. Uh, Dr. Srikanth, uh, could you brought out some, uh, uh, throw some light on how this pandemic uh, has affected the uh, health sector majorly and what was the response from uh, people's side and the institution side and also from the government side? Uh, from Indian perspective. Over to you, Dr. Namaste, everyone. <clears throat> Namaste, everyone. Uh, I'm audible, right? Okay. Uh, yeah. Thank you for the opportunity, Dr. Bala. Uh, 
So, uh, I, in my opinion, uh, India's response to the pandemic is a mixed bag, which is in line with uh, many calamities uh, that we had in history of time. I mean, uh, and uh, though we have significant uh, room for doing better, like you said, uh, we have to understand that this is an unprecedented crisis. And uh, to start with, any decision were taken uh, in good faith, and uh, even at an individual level or at a national level. Uh, but in retrospect, it is very difficult to assess the appropriateness of these decisions at this point. So at an individual level, we lost about uh, 4 lakh people, which is very unfortunate. Families lost uh, their loved ones. Uh, they were actually destroyed financially because of the healthcare costs uh, and the expenditure. And several patients were disabled uh, and still going through post-COVID syndrome. At a community level, uh, the pandemic exposed the core problems in our healthcare system, need for better infrastructure or need for more personnel, not just doctors or nurses, physical therapists or uh, other other personnel. And reach of uh, our uh, healthcare uh, into the interiors of India is also exposed. Uh, and uh, at a governmental level, we have had enough lag time to better prepare for the pandemic compared to many countries in the world. Uh, which uh, I don't think uh, we could have used, which we could, which we could not use appropriately. Um, so, and uh, another observation that I found uh, very interesting is that during the first wave, uh, we have uh, we did not have, we did not know how the disease actually progresses, and uh, we did not have any vaccination. We did not have any medications or had medications which were not working appropriately. So then, uh, with whatever uh, measures that were taken, the wave was flattened. But in the second wave, in the second period, second part of the disease in the last year, this year, 2021, uh, we have uh, we have a better understanding of the disease. We have the vaccination drive started. We have had several medications which are working very well, and we are better prepared. But unlike many other countries, we second wave was actually more harsh, and uh, I was at the round zero dealing with the patient. So uh, I don't think we have done that well we are, like we are supposed to. But there are several positives also to take from the pandemic. So Indian public has realized, in my opinion, the limitations of medical care and need for like, they have understood much better this time that it is a collaborative uh, thing with individuals and medical people together, care together that they can improve. They have understood that they have to bolster their immunity, started working on their lifestyle, diet, exercise, a lot of things. And medical community as a whole, I mean, I can talk from a, a real time practice, not I'm not talking about the academicians or researchers, uh, we we now the approach to it is more evidence based. Uh, there is more people are actually uh, reading through literature, uh, looking at updates, which is new. To be frank, uh, at a, a real time practitioner level, which I've never seen in the last several years of my practice. And uh, in a way, new new ways of offering medical care is being tried actively. They're open to it. Telehealth, uh, home health, better understanding. All these are actually but uh, accepting Ayurveda or other streams. They're all happening. So I think there is a lot of positive as well. Did we lose Dr. Bala? Thank you, uh, Dr. Srikant, for uh, bringing out uh, uh, the very important aspect that people in the second wave have realized the, and they have become aware of the limitations that they have and try to respond to the limitations that uh, they could uh, uh, engage with. You know? uh, and awareness with regard to various immunity boosting practices from the traditional methodology, traditional uh, medicine, and responding, using them effectively and trying to respond to the crisis, health crisis is a very important aspect that we have to take into consideration. Uh, yeah, having, uh, having encountered this health crisis, it's not just limited to health crisis because it has gone beyond that in impacting other very important aspects of uh, human life. Uh, one of the most significant things uh, uh, is education. Um, in India, immediately, all over the world, all the education institutions were uh, closed, forced to close because they cannot allow any proximity of uh, uh, one to the other and allow any community gathering to come together. <coughs> so in such kind of a situation, uh, the, the impact of pandemic on education sector forms a very important and significant aspect. So uh, I request uh, Pankajji to respond to this uh, uh, concern that we had uh, in her opening statement. Since you are the vice chancellor of uh, a university and also you have been part of uh, many significant bodies uh, in 
higher education level at the government of India. So how do you look at this uh, whole process and how do you think uh, India, uh, Indian education system or education sector has responded to this pandemic, limitations of the pandemic? Thank you, Dr. Bala, and thanks to Harasis for inviting me here and giving me the opportunity to interact with all of you. As far as education is concerned, both at the school level as well as the higher education level, education was impacted very, very badly. You all know that as soon as the pandemic struck India in March, 2020th March or 22nd March, the, all the universities, all the colleges, all the schools closed down. All the teachers, students, they were sitting at home. So in the beginning, it was really, I mean, I, nobody could understand what to do. It, it seemed as if we, we don't know what to do and whether our children will be able to study in near future or not. But slowly, slowly, India started uh, gearing up. And I must say that in no time, maybe in a month's time, all the Indian teachers, whether at the school level, college level, the university level, started teaching online. And then when, when you talk of started teaching online, they, there are so many issues involved with this. One is infrastructure, because India is a diverse country, large country, rich and poor both coexist. So there was a lot of uh, uh, digital divide in the country because somebody had access to devices, internet, bandwidth, but there were people who didn't even have access to electricity. So this Digital divide was a very big issue. Then the capacity building of the teachers to teach online effectively, although they undertook online activities, but then teaching effectively is a slightly different paradigm in which they have to learn. They have to be trained to teach online. Then there were impacts on the internships, placement, assessment. You will be surprised that in the uh, large country like India, we had to cancel the 12th class board examinations, which were considered to be most important examinations for the future of any student used to decide what the student will be doing in future. But we could not hold those 12th class examinations also. So it, it impacted a lot. And then there were a drop in the uh, students' admissions. There were many dropouts in the school level. And I don't even know whether the people who dropped out at that point of time, will they ever be going to school again or not? So it was a very severe impact. But then there were organizations like I at AIU, I am Association of Indian Universities, which is representing around 850 universities in the country. So we took it upon ourselves to deal with the crisis, how to deal with the crisis. So we started many, many training programs for capacity building of teachers. We started programs for online internships and placements. We started programs for uh, choosing the right type of platform for teaching or for assessment and evaluation and even in the health aspect because I knew that when the second wave specially struck, there were so many uh, issues with regard to uh, health, health issues which the university teachers, vice chancellor students, they were not knowing. So we started a meet the doctor series. So I mean, and doctors like Dr. Guleria, Dr. Trehan, Dr. Suri, uh, Dr. Balram Bhargav, even Dr. Somya Swaminathan. So we requested them to come and speak to our vice chancellor. So we started a meet the doctor series. So like this, we tried to respond to the pandemic in a very, very positive way. But the impact was there, impact is there, and impact will be felt everywhere. Except for this, that the, uh, that the pandemic has also been used as an opportunity to move on the blended mode of learning rather than face-to-face, -face, which we were used to so far. Thank you. Yeah, that's that's so nice. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Pankhiji, for this response. Like uh, The movement from uh, a regular mode or physical mode to the online mode has impacted the lives of both the teachers as well as the students. No, the, the, uh, the teaching learning system has to transform itself. And in the process, the digital divide played a key role because even I being a... Sorry? Open. Engage with them. The future has been. Dr. Bala, we can't hear you. I think your video is breaking up. <laughs> Uh, 
Yeah, we yes. are talking about digital divide, and this is the digital <laughs> divide. <laughs> like, we don't know when we would uh, we would be cut off from the mainstream, and when we would be cut off from the uh, internet connectivity. You know, if this is happening in Delhi, sitting at the uh, heart of the country, and it uh, obviously it would be a fact of life for many teachers and students all over the country. So yeah, that has to be taken into consideration while discussing about the ed- education sector. Uh, let us uh, now move from education to the economy, How, because economy is the major one. Uh, there, there was a major impact on economy, and uh, uh, people were concerned about that. And uh, let me invite uh, Praveen uh, to respond from the perspective of the uh, perspective of an educationist. How would you look at this whole crisis and the response to that? Before uh, Praveen speaks, uh, I, I see many of our audience raising their hands. I think uh, let us have a round of discussion by the panelists, and then uh, we would open it for uh, audience to uh, see, ask questions, and uh, seek responses from the panelists. So please, uh, I request the audience to wait till the uh, till the panelists complete their uh, perspective. Yeah, over to you, uh, Praveen. Uh, namaste. It's an honor to be here. Um, uh, first thing we need to realize is that this. As, as we've discussed before, this pandemic was very unexpected and has had a very severe impact. Now, we've all seen the statistics uh, on what it has done to the economy of India and, in fact, to the economy of the world. Um, the, uh, if you take a short-term perspective, there's certainly big concerns, a lot of people slipping into poverty, and, and that's a very, very troublesome you know, issue, and you want to make sure that you, you prevent as many people from having economic and, and, and health hardships as possible. Uh, international governments, which have a lot more ability to, um, uh, you know, more social welfare systems and stuff, have been able to tackle that in, in a different way from the way uh, the Indian government or, or um, a, com- a country in the sort of economic state of India can do it. So it's incumbent on private philanthropy, private businesses, you know, uh, to to be as helpful as possible. Now, I'm a member of an organization called YPO. And one of the things we did was we formed a, an expat Indian group. And the first thing we were concerned about in the first wave, how do we protect our businesses? You know, this was, everyone was very worried, um, you know, sort of um, how do you meet payrolls? How do you manage your debt? How do you, you know, how do you survive? Um, uh, you know, once we kind of, and we're all helping each other, we're all giving each other advice. This is what I see in my business. This is how I handled it. If somebody else is telling me what they did. And it was extremely helpful. By the time the second wave came about, we were a lot more confident on, on how, how to manage, you know, the situation. And kind of some of my colleagues came up with very, very good, uh, opportunities to, you know, provide medical aid, provide oxygen. And we all contributed through that system because me sitting in Monaco, it would be very difficult for me to know exactly how I can help, even though I would like to help. And everyone I know realizes that we are all in this situation anywhere in the world that we are in and anywhere we can help, we should. Uh, so it's great to have champions who could actually help deliver, uh, you know, uh, help at the time that it was needed in the place it was needed. So I think that was, that was very good. Um, so I think this is how we're going to come out of the crisis. And, you know, if you look at how other economies have done when they've come out of the crisis, China, for example, you had a very strong economic spike following, you know, the downturn. Uh, and then afterwards, it probably will normalize. You're seeing that, that big jump right now in the U.S. followed by, by Europe. <coughs> if you take a longer term perspective, I think uh, we will come out of it and we'll be fine. In the short term, we're all human beings and we need to help each other and do whatever we can to, to alleviate the crisis as much as possible. Yeah, thank you, uh, uh, Praveen. Yeah, that's that's true that we have to look at it from both short-term and long-term perspectives when we try to understand the impact of the economy. Definitely, every country has uh, impacted by this pandemic. Uh, but uh, if you look at it from a long-term perspective, probably there would be better opportunities for the countries, some of the countries to come out from this eco- economic uh, crisis in a better way. So that's how you you can see it uh, as an opportunity as well for some countries. Uh, thank you so much for pointing out that. Uh, now, when we look at this uh, pandemic uh, from health, from education, from economy, 
there is one important component uh, as i was saying when we are talking about india it's not just a political system or a geographical uh, uh, mass we are referring to people and the governance along with the institutions as well so how did these people respond to the crisis or the people who were in the crisis and also how did this governance respond to the need of people is another important and interesting aspect that we have to look at uh, when we are referring to uh, countering the crisis i i invite uh, uh, vijay ji to respond to this from this particular perspective vijay ji over to you this is a bala thanks for asking me to speak basically we all know that rc is a very diverse and very huge country we are uh, second to china as far as population is concerned so our problems are different from all other to the problem that other countries face then we have the poverty also and uh, i'll say that sub standard health care facilities is all given so we had to manage this uh, pandemic uh, you know looking at all these factors you know when you look at administration and the decision making there are many facets of it you know it's not only you know curing people in hospitals providing them uh, medicines but taking decisions for all the other sectors say for example you know uh, ordering lockdown now uh, if you look back there are many people who will uh, criticize uh, that we should not have gone for that kind of hard lockdown or we should have done this and we should have done that in front of the administrative structure these are the decisions which are most crucial when to close down your and how long they should be allowed to close down and how to start opening up all these decisions are very difficult to so it's very easy to sit outside and decide and give comments that we should have done this we should have done that when you sit on the chair where you have to take all these harsh decisions then things look totally different third you know after the lockdown you know the problem that started as uh, earlier finally said nation about the economy you know everything you close down then what will happen to the workers the millions of workers who are totally dependent on day to day earnings so this was one of the most major factor i'll say before the government how to handle the issue of you know live loss of livelihood loss of you know earning capacity of large population of our country so these things put together the government had to take a very calibrated and major we you know we could we i would say that we handled the first wave quite efficiently and uh, the whole world in a you know basically appreciated the india's handling of covid because it not only you know helped itself uh, handle the uh, pandemic but it also uh, you know extended its helping hand to many countries also and in fact the vaccination issue also you know brought in a lot of laurels for the country because our prime minister and our country promised to help other countries poorer countries in vaccination issues also come the second wave you know basically it struck us uh, from nowhere and uh, the kind of uh, you know spread the kind of infection that uh, you know started taking place in our country it overwhelmed our system you know we hadn't imagined that uh, from uh, you know case uh, you know infection of 10000 per day we will within a 15 days time will reach that the figure of 3 lakh now our system or i'll say no the system of the world was you know geared to take up these kind of challenges if you recall from sabala what happened in italy what happened in france in the first phase what happened in uk what us these systems were overwhelmed totally and the kind of things that we saw in our country in the second wave we are all visible there so these countries are supposed to be very rich and they had a you know much better uh, healthcare systems but we got over second day did uh, overwhelm our uh, system and uh, we uh, just couldn't save many of the lives that we lost uh, during the second day and this is very unfortunate and we have regret that many things that could have been done better uh, we we could have done better but i will say that administration did very well to uh, within its limited capacity and ensured that our country comes out the second wave fast yeah uh, thank you uh, vijay ji for pointing out this very important aspect that taking a decision is not taking a decision about the, the immediate concern that we have because it will have uh, cumulative repercussions on various other aspects as well that we have to take into consideration and that is how when you take a particular decision 
uh, its unforeseen consequences on other sectors also would emerge and come out in a uh, unpredictable way that would happen with the case of uh, immigrant workers uh, and many other aspects as well so you have rightly pointed out that so we have uh, completed the first round of uh, the discussion uh, uh, friends uh, uh, i think lyric couldn't join us so uh, we'll move to the second uh, round of the discussion uh, basically we have understood that there are limitations and limitations of the existing system were made to be aware of by everyone in the world and also in the country the existing system or insufficient even if you think that they are they have the latest uh, equipment with them even then such kind of countries also uh, couldn't uh, make an attempt to counter the crisis in an effective way so given that kind of a situation that limitations are there in the human life and which were made uh, people to realize and the second one is a movement from the relation between individual and the community whether you are taking it uh, Uh, from the health sector or from education or uh, referring to economy <coughs> or the governance aspect the individual and the community and their relation is very important and this aspect comes up again and again in the discussion uh, dr srikanth in fact uh, uh, i have uh, uh, i know you uh, personally as somebody who is trying to help people in india uh, staying at usa and trying to help the people through telemedicine and whatever means that are possible through this uh, organization that you have uh, and i i even personally i know that almost uh, 200 300 families have definitely got uh, positively uh, come out of the crisis situation so how do you look at this one no how do you uh, uh, look at this from the perspective of the families from the pers- perspective of the individuals so yeah please <clears throat> Well, Dr. Bala, uh, uh, actually, this one one aspect that uh, we did not have a good understanding initially uh, in the pandemic is that this disease is a syndrome. It's not uh, an individual uh, physical disease. It affects uh, the patient at a psychological level. It affects the family as a whole. So there's a big aspect that we have understood that we need a comprehensive plan, not just a pharmaceutical like medications is not enough to treat this disease. So we need to give emotional support, psychological support for the patient and also the family a lot of times. And uh, unless you and there is a significant recovery that has to happen once the disease uh, hits the patient uh, and the way uh, the uh, clinician approaches this problem uh including uh, other aspects of uh, medical care like physical therapy etc mm-hmm. etc et uh will decide how much impact would have on patient's health and the family so uh, uh the, so the need for what we did as an organization is that uh, we designed comprehensive programs where uh, we were uh, educating the patient family together along with the physical therapy and uh, the cost would decrease significantly for these patients uh, there is initial panic and uh, uh, and uh, there is like a rush to get admitted to the hospitals which actually overburdened and uh, suffocated the system and we have to understand that uh, to un- uh, we understood that we need to uh, decompress the system by keeping the patients which can be managed at home uh in a safe environment in the, in the safest possible safest possible uh, methods so we tried to initiate uh, telehealth and home health and we activated them and it worked out significantly it's not just for us there were several organizations which have done it several uh, uh, uh clinicians have actually realized that they have to innovate themselves and uh, they have started offering care uh, at a, at home so uh this is this is going to be the future of uh, healthcare is what i understood like how education is changing uh like uh, how many other businesses are changing uh, we have to uh, innovate ourselves to provide better care and uh, like dr uh, uh, you know like uh, mr vijay ji has said uh, if you we have to be realistic too in taking in, in addressing this pandemic uh, in india term because so far i think about uh, 423 million uh, vaccination shots were given which uh, is 6.5% of indian population if you compare it with the american population usa they have given 340 million shots which is 56% so it is uncomparable so uh, you have to understand what we are dealing with in india so it is so easy to uh, look at everything uh, judge so to to see how government or anybody individuals are doing but there is a collaborative effort that is needed 
uh, in terms of uh, NGOs, uh, NRIs, or like different kinds of uh, parts of society supporting the government as well in taking care of this. Yeah, as you have rightly pointed out, it's not just the individual's health because uh, with, with the with the effect of the pandemic on an individual, the family's health in terms of emotional and uh, physiological, psychological, every aspect gets affected and the family gets disturbed because we have seen in many families, because of this pandemic, the, the uh, families have shattered. Uh, uh, we, we have many witnesses of that, especially in the second uh, wave. I'm uh, talking from uh, Delhi University. At least 60 of, we lost at least 60 of our colleagues or their family members, which means I'm talking about a close circle. So that's, that, that shows the impact of that. And some of the families, because of their earning numbers death, uh, have completely got shattered. So it's like uh, the holistic system of the family uh, completely got uh, affected. And uh, yeah, that, thanks for pointing out this very important aspect. Uh, yeah, uh, Pankajji, you were, you were referring to this digital divide and also how India has tried to counter uh, while regulating its own education system. So would you like to add any uh, other point to what you have said? I feel uh, in India, of course, it has impacted very badly. Education sector, health sector, we have lost many dear and dear uh, ones. But uh, at, in education sector, we have also tried to use this crisis as an opportunity. Opportunity in the sense that uh, till the pandemic stuck, all the questions like uh, how to teach, how to teach, how to assess the students, what to teach, pre-pandemic and post-pandemic questions are the same, but the answers are different. Answers are different because how to teach, we were used to face-to-face, -to -face. we never even thought of online teaching. But then now everything is online. I mean, totally online. Everybody is teaching. And the in the new normal, we won't be having face-to-face -face or online. It will be a blended mode of education. So the future will be different. And that has been taught to us by the pandemic. Initially, we thought that foreign collaborations cannot be there because teachers cannot go, students cannot go. But slowly, slowly, we learned that online collaborations are more cost-effective and time-effective. So many of the universities started having lectures from the foreign teachers online in the online way, which we earlier did not think of. Similarly, internships, placements, everything. And But one, one important thing which happened was it impacted the mental health of the students because the students were alone. They were not meeting the friends. They were not meeting the teachers. They were not going to the campuses, just sitting within the room, only within those three, four people of the family and somewhere they were only totally alone. So it impacted their mental health very badly. So we had requested and the universities themselves also started many, many counseling sessions for the students so that they, they, they are not disturbed. And we at AIU did one important thing like we are involved in culture and sports also in addition to academics and research. So we started an online program called Kuch Artistic Corona. The Corona was rhymed as Corona, the Kuch Artistic Corona, in which every student was requested that they should give their cultural performances in a video and send it to AIU. And we got something like 3,000 entries. And in those 3,000 entries, students had performed and they, they really felt happy. And we announced some prizes also. So I think uh, we have to come out with innovative ways whenever a crisis is there. And every crisis does bring many, many opportunities with it. And we have to look at those opportunities and seize those opportunities so that we can uh, use them in future in the new normal and bring a better world, which is more cost effective, more time effective and more networked. So more networked world is required. Yeah, thank you so much for pointing out this uh, very, very important aspect of mental health of the students as well as the teachers. Now, because uh, when I was talking to the students, I found that uh, most of the students find uh, the college or the school to be a liberating space where they come and interact with the younger ones uh, uh, who are of the same age and try to bring out the best in them. So it gives a, uh, an opportunity for them to come out with their uh, potential uh, possibilities. So that is how they see it to be a liberating space. And once this liberating space is curtailed for them and they, they, they had their own uh, problems of uh, looking at themselves and also looking at themselves in relation to the other. So, yeah, thank you uh, so much for that uh, point. Uh, Praveen, uh, it's, when we look at it from the economist's perspective, it's not just the individual business person. 
it is also at the national level and also at the institutional level uh, much impact uh, has come up so uh, from the side of uh, you being at malapo so how do you look at it um as yeah, a business person yeah well you know as as uh, both uh, pankaj ji and, and shikant ji have mentioned uh you know there's been a lot of innovation which has taken place uh and you know one of the obvious one which comes to mind is is for example zoom um where you can do a lot uh you can you can if you have a lot of meetings without having to physically travel um you know you you change the way you 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 do things you work much more like like i gave you the example of of our ypo group where we had uh people 80 people from many different parts of the world all of india origin work you know first of all trying to understand how what the problem was how do we get understand the magnitude of the problem uh then we first try to work out our personal situation uh, and when we once we felt confident with that we kind of said now what what can we do to the community and then you have uh you know um uh, people who can champion the the uh, a certain process and then you know we can all back that champion and 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 that's the most effective way to to get a good solution done so i think you know people the world over are 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 thinking very innovatively and now india has one huge um advantage that you've got a very very big diaspora which is very successful uh both in, you know people like shant ji who are very successful in their field uh, uh have a tremendous amount of knowledge and the other people who have a lot of financial resources and what i have seen which is very heartening is a coming together of a lot of these people and a lot of people have said for the heart we need to do something what can i do in my personal situation to help less fortunate people in india and you know from from my own personal point of view i'm very concerned when i hear statistics of 40 million people you know slipping to poverty once you slip into poverty as was mentioned earlier you know uh, big collateral damage would be you know girls education for example what can we do to counter that um and and this is a kind of you know there, there are short term and long term solutions for example one of our earlier panelists a uh, good friend friend of mine sunil albani has project maji which basically brings water uh you know to 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 remote villages and stuff like that um uh, you know this this is not necessarily a pandemic related solution it's a long term solution so how do you blend you know uh immediate needs with very good well thought out long term solutions and that is sort of what we you know we're putting our thoughts you know and you know together on and and what what you're seeing is the kind of technological change which take 10 years to happen happening in a matter of 6 months you know that's the beauty of the whole thing so it's, um yeah thank you yeah it's it's true that uh, the technical technological uh, growth that might have come over a uh, period of 10 years or 15 years uh, we have uh, uh, reached that in uh, a span of uh, probably one year or less than one year time and that is how uh, the economy and also uh, uh, the impact on the industry is a uh, huge uh, from the side of uh, information and technological revolution uh, uh, vijay ji if you look at it from the perspective of uh, because you have said that you you talked about the impact of uh, this pandemic on the livelihoods of the people uh and also uh, how uh, the second wave especially impacted the life of the people uh see in the first wave at least we didn't have any information how to counter it but when it comes to the second wave we had the experience of the first wave but even then there were certain limitations with, with through which we have to move further and uh, there are people like uh, sono su and others who have come forward and who have uh, helped people in a huge way so we we see a lot of philanthropy coming into the picture and trying to help and support the people who are in need so uh, would you like to respond to that from uh, that perspective uh, dr bala we all know that the second wave really uh, i'll say massacred our population and uh, i uh, don't think any family uh, can say that uh, they didn't face their trouble because of this pandemic every every family had uh, illnesses and uh, few deaths also so this was very very tragic moment for all of us but i have bala uh, tremendous faith in the capacity of humanity to overcome any crisis or stress if you recall 100 years back tuberculosis used to be one of the disease which was more uh, i'll say uh, lethal than this one 
you know, we used to send away our, the, all the patients to sanatoriums. You know, we never used to keep them in our homes or houses because we were so scared of it. But we learned to live with tuberculosis. Let me point out one fact that, you know, our, if you believe the government data and what is the published data in our country, we lost 4.1 euro lakh people due to this, uh, uh, you know, coronavirus. Every year, we lose 4.5 lakh people because of tuberculosis still. And, you know, what is the case load every moment uh, of time in our country because of uh, tuberculosis? It's 35 lakhs. So we have learned to live with it. And now we are not scared of it. So I feel that we will be uh, soon learning to live with Corona and it will become a part and parcel of our daily, you know, practices. We will start to resume all our activities. All the colleges and schools will also be open. All the businesses will also run. And by that time, we would have vaccinated people or, you know, come out with more uh, medicines, more uh, other, you know, cures, and we will live with it. So it's a very short-term measure. This is my feeling. Uh, looking at what has happened with humanity over a period of thousand years, we have overcome all these crises sooner, and we will do this time also. We have only to be careful. One thing that uh, sooner we do uh, take all these measures, better because ours is a country which has large number of very poor people. If we don't take corrective measures fast, they go and slip deeper into poverty, and there that will be very sad. Similarly, education, you know, one year has been lost. And I, I agree with the Pankaji that a lot of efforts were made to go online. But, you know, uh, online classes can supplement the education process to some extent. Two educationists are sitting on the panels, you will vouch for it. You know, you can't replace the, uh, uh, you know, face-to-face -face teaching method. So, uh, my <coughs> that government should, be, should soon come out with the package, with the policy directives that we will be opening our schools. And finally, we have to learn to live with this coronavirus. We, 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 we shouldn't be so scared as we are today because slowly and slowly we are getting our population vaccinated and we are learning more and more methods how to counter it. Yeah, yeah. Thank you so much for that because uh, we have now understood that uh, initially at the end of the first wave, we thought it's over. And then we had second wave and now people predict third wave or probably Possibly we don't know how many waves we still have to encounter and uh, respond to them. Uh, uh, I see uh, two uh, two of our uh, friends raising their hand. Kevin, would you like to say something? Would you like to add anything? A quick point that you would like to make because I see your hand rising. Kevin, you can you can ask for a mic and then speak. Or Mahesh. Yeah, please, Mahesh. I think your mic is on, Mahesh. You can speak. Mina, thank you very much. Uh, 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 discussion, especially about the response. Uh, uh, by the universities and by the educational system um, to uh, to uh, a severe crisis and by the uh, kudos for the NRI or not required here Indian community that is trying to help. I'm just sending my family uh, 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 a message of the highlights that 40 million have fallen into poverty. That is very sad. Uh, actually, it's around 150, 100 to 150 million around the world, 100 million nearly in Africa. Um, so I think the pandemic is allowing us to bring ourselves together to help each other. And I think that's a very important and refreshing thing that you are reflecting yeah, thank you on. So much. Good luck in this process. I think what you're discussing here is one of the most interesting. Yeah, thank you so much, Mahesh. Do you, do you have any specific question? Or, uh, I, I really appreciate the comment that you have made. Uh, 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 yes, I, I think that the question is really how do you see the mix of the online and and face-to-face -face evolving uh, in the educational system? It's so vital, especially for those who do not have the means to access uh digital communications what will you do about that that is the 
most severe thing for those who are falling into poverty and those who cannot access into yeah this this uh, uh, i think uh Dr. Pankaj can respond to that, but we don't have time. We have completed our uh, uh, scheduled time. So if you can give a quick uh, one-minute response to that, uh, Dr. Pankaj. See, of course, uh, we always say that uh, online is not the best thing, but it is the second best thing, given the situation which we had. But we also right. see that online does have many advantages. Therefore, we are thinking that future is blended. It will be a mix of face-to-face -face plus online. <laughs> But with regard to the digital device, I think the government is spending a lot on the infrastructure. The universities themselves are spending a lot on technology. And then some schemes like donate a device where we donate the old devices to the people who are in need of those devices or maybe having connectivity till now we have connectivity till the panchayat level. So sort of having a classroom at the panchayat level where all the students are coming and access the devices. So some such measures can be done. And country is doing a lot to take care of especially the infrastructure, keeping in view the pandemic and keeping in view that the students are not able to uh, sort of attend classes just because of the lack of infrastructure, including having yeah. say, direct to home television, where the network is not required straight away the classes, these classes are transmitted through the television. So many, many measures are being taken and many will be taken in future too. That's true. Uh, in fact, that's your closing remark. Like it is the second best thing that we have, you know, <laughs> because that that's the only way we can look at it. Uh, would you like to make any closing remark, Dr. Uh, absolutely. Uh, I think uh, quickly. Uh, uh, I to I totally agree. You know, we need to uh, since we have uh, we are resource uh, uh, deficient uh, country, especially in healthcare with the low GDP that we as a part that is as uh, added. I think uh, we need to make use of this uh, telehealth a lot more uh, to have uh, healthcare reach more interiors of the country and uh, better use the resources uh, in creating uh, you know more number of personnel being able to help a larger group than what they can normally in person help and that needs to be concentrated and looked at significantly yeah telehealth is to be uh, promoted much you know this is the closing uh, mm -hmm. statement of uh, Srikant. Uh, Praveen would you like to make a closing statement uh, I would just say that uh, every crisis uh, leads to an opportunity and uh, things like enhancements in personal hygiene, innovative use of technology for education and business and other purposes. Uh, hopefully we will come out of this in the long term a lot stronger. Ah, well, it's a very optimistic note. You know, crisis also opens certain uh, possibilities of improvement. Thank you so much Kevin, for that. Uh, Ajay ji, would you like to make any closing uh, statement? Dr. Bala, I am absolutely hopeful that uh, humanity will come out of this crisis very soon and uh, we will go back to the normal and uh, we will learn to live with this. So let's not be you know, fearful of this uh, pandemic any longer. Soon, this, this is going to be within a framework of a year or two. <coughs> yeah, that's, that's great. Actually, there is no code of conduct as to how to deal with a crisis, okay? especially this pandemic, unprecedented pandemic that we have faced. Uh, you know, since last two years or more than one year and every attempt is a blind attempt to counter it and when, when it is a blind attempt you cannot weigh the consequences and when you cannot retrospectively assess uh, the activities you know actions that are taken up but still when you look at it over a period of time when you assess it looking back at the, the happenings that uh, went on uh, I, I think uh, the world should be very optimistic and it has definitely countered the crisis in a better way and india is also india has also played a significant uh, uh, play uh, in countering the crisis quite well i thank the panelists for joining me and uh, making this uh, uh, panel discussion very vibrant and interesting the many points have come out come out and uh, uh, it's it's definitely would be a good beginning to uh, proceed further with regard to looking back at the pandemic situation and preparing ourselves for the future uh, of our own generation and future generations. Thank you so much to all of you, uh, uh, Dr. Srikant and Dr. Pantes, uh, Mr. Praveen and Ajay Shankar Thank you so much. Thanks to Dr. Bala for excellent you. moderation. <laughs> Thank you. Thank, thanks to all the audience. Thank you.